Hi folks, it's difficult to contain the level of excitement that I have for the new version of QuickBooks Desktop 2021. For accountants, part of the Pro Advisor program, the new version 2021 was released early September, which is when I am recording this. To most small business owners and other QuickBooks users, uh, 2021 should be available around October of the year 2020. Now, if you are going to purchase an upgrade to QuickBooks Desktop 2021, whether it's Pro, Premier, Accountant, my favorite edition, or Enterprise, uh, you could buy it through us. I'll put some links and contact information in the description. Let's jump right to the purpose of this video, which is to give you a quick preview of what the new Bank Feeds screen looks like inside QuickBooks Desktop. Bank Feeds is the place where QuickBooks connects to the banks, downloads the transactions, and then gives the users the options to categorize those transactions based on what they're supposed to do, what, or what they're supposed to be anyway, and, uh, and really speed up the data entry process. So let's dive deep into how that works, and I'm working on QuickBooks uh, Enterprise 2021, but this will work in Pro, Premier, Accountant, Enterprise, any desktop version of uh, QuickBooks will have this feature. So I'm going to click on the banking menu and then I'm going to go down into bank feeds and then click on bank feeds center. So that will send me into the bank feeds and you will notice that the new screen has been completely redesigned. If you're also a QuickBooks online user, you will notice that it looks a little bit like QuickBooks online, which was an amazing upgrade to the whole process of bank feeds. Now to make this a little bit easier and more comfortable to work with, I am going to collapse that left navigation bar so I get a little bit more real estate on the screen. Now you're gonna see here in the top where it says bank and credit cards, uh, you can click on the drop down menu where it says Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, whatever, you will have every single bank account that has been connected. You will get a drop down menu and you can easily swap and, uh, and switch the active account that you're working in. You also get these uh, sort of big uh, cards that contain the most recently downloaded bank balance from the bank and whatever the current balance in QuickBooks is. You will also get a number that will let you know how many transactions are pending to be uh categorized or reviewed. They call it reviewed. When you go a little bit down, you're going to see four uh, sort of tabs that uh, separate your workflow. You're going to have recognized, partially recognized, which is really cool. We're going to have unrecognized and then add it to the register. Unrecognized would be all the transactions that have been downloaded and QuickBooks really has no idea how to categorize. So let's do a couple so you kind of see how this workflow works. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select any of these transactions. For example, you see this one in 611, delivery.com. And then here under the payee, I'm going to click on the drop down menu and select the vendor that belongs to that delivery.com. I can start typing D E L and it looks like it doesn't even exist. So I can just create it on the fly. So I'm going to type delivery.com or I could just call it whatever is it that it's supposed to be. And I'm going to hit a tab on the keyboard. Immediately after I hit tab, I get a, a menu that says, hey, this vendor doesn't exist. At this point, I'll just click on quick add and then click on vendor and click OK. And that will create the vendor into my vendor database. I'll, put a, I'll make a quick pause here, click on vendor on the top of the screen and then on vendor center. And then you will know that uh, if I scroll down to the D's, we're now going to see uh, delivery.com. Where are you? in the database. Let me uh, resort this by name. And there it is, delivery.com. So in the future, when another transaction from delivery.com uh, shows up, I don't have to create that vendor. Uh, QuickBooks should actually recognize that as we go. Then we're gonna, we have a blank box here that says uh, bank memo, and that would be what downloaded from the bank. Sometimes the memo downloads, sometimes it doesn't. I can actually add some additional information here like uh, lunch with Mike. So I can override whatever came uh, from the bank, or in this case, whatever came from the bank was blank, I can add some additional memo per se. Now, account would be that category uh, of that expense transaction. So I would look at the transaction is $44. That's probably meals, meals and entertainment, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, meals. So once I click on that, look how, how easy it is. It's all in one line. It's super easy to work with. At this point, I can click on add 
or I can click on the drop down menu next to add and see all the different options that it has. If I click on add more details, it's going to give me a pop up where I could potentially split this expense. So let's say, for example, half of this was meals and maybe half of it was a personal expenditure. I can actually click on add line and then break them down here so I can uh, divide this by two. Uh, actually, I can't do the calculation on the fly here, but well, let's just to make it easier. We'll do 44. We'll do 24.71, and then we'll do uh, 20. We'll just call this uh, uh, personal. And I'll go ahead and select maybe uh, a distribution shareholders distribution account of some sort. Let's see if I have that in my chart of accounts, and uh, maybe under capital. Okay. Well, it would help to know or memorize your chart of accounts. Let me see what equity accounts I have here for my personal expenses. Okay, I got an account called owner's personal expenses. That's kind of how it works. From this screen, you can also uh, job costs or select a customer job uh, related to this transaction, but this is just showing you how, uh, how you would split the transaction if you needed to split it instead of creating the transaction on the fly. So just click on save and add to register, and that now adds it into my credit card account, bank account, whatever is it that I downloaded. If I click here where it says add it to register, I can click on that, and this will give me a list of all the transactions that have been added to the register from bank feeds. If I double click on it, it will take me to the actual underlying transaction that was recorded into the book. So I'll hit escape to get out of there, and I'll go back to uncategorized. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sort these vendor lists uh, download it as here, and then I'm going to pick one of these 7-Elevens, and then I'm going to basically uh, kind of create the transaction on the fly, and uh, let's categorize these to gas, so we have that expense category, let's type auto expenses, okay, we'll put it under auto expenses, then I click on the drop down menu, and then I'll click on add more details, and notice down here where it says create rule from this transaction, when I click on that, it will basically automatically I create a rule for the transaction. So in this case, I can call this uh, 7-Eleven. And it says here, if the description matches this text, automatically make it 7-Eleven and auto expenses. So I'm going to click on save and expressly create that rule and click on save and add uh, to register. So you will notice that that one transaction is going to be saved and added to the register. But then when I click on recognized, now you will see that it figured out that three other transactions uh, were applying and is automatically suggesting what to do with these. At this point, I wouldn't have to add each of these individually. I can click on batch actions here on the bottom and then click on add confirm and that will create or add those three transactions into the register all in one shot. Let's go back into uh, unrecognized sorted by uh, downloaded as, and notice that there's other 7-Elevens, but in this case, notice that they have different, in this case, different store numbers per se. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on rules, and then I'm gonna go to 7-Eleven, click on the drop down menu, or actually just click on edit. Um, and then what I wanna do is I want to uh, change the condition. So instead of matching exactly 7-Eleven, we'll do uh, contains, and then we'll remove uh, the store number in this case, and then click on save. So that what that would do is we'll slightly modify that rule to catch anything that has 7-Eleven regardless of what store number it has. So I can click out of that and then we're gonna see that it's gonna do its thing. Uh, um, it's waiting for it to reorganize and then go back into recategorize and notice that the new uh, or the other 7-Eleven stores that had a different store number are, are now uh, added to the recognize. At this point, I can click on batch actions add and confirm, and then click on yes, and it will add those transactions automatically as well. I'm gonna go back into on, on, on recognize, and we're gonna talk about matching for a second. So matching is one of these more complex concepts where maybe we created the transaction prior to uh, downloading it, and we're gonna use the downloads feature to match the transaction. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, a transaction before we go into bank feeds for this Amazon purchase of $169.98. And then I'm gonna go back into bank feeds and instead of adding a new transaction, I'm gonna have it uh, match it. So I'll just get out of here for a second. And then I'm gonna go into uh, banking 
and click on enter credit card charges. Then I'm going to uh, go into purchases from, I'll put uh, Amazon, and then we'll make this 169. I actually forgot what that dollar amount was exactly. Let me go back into bank feeds here to remember the dollar amount. Matching only works when the dollar amounts are exact. So I should have uh, written that down, I guess. So let's go down and see how much that transaction was. Let me organize it by charge again and go down to the 169. Uh, there you go, 169.98. That's the one we wanted to do. So we'll get out of that and then we'll put 0.98 and we'll date this maybe uh, April 30th because that's like the, the day that I ordered it. Let's call it that. And then we're going to put this into uh, office supplies and then we can have any memos we want. We can put a uh, new uh, printer, whatever we want. In, in essence, we're creating the transactions preemptively prior to doing the download because maybe somebody dumped a receipt on my desk and my job is to enter all those receipt expenditures even prior they show up in my bank feeds. So we created the transaction prior to the bank feeds. So it's in the register. Now I'm going to go back into uh, bank feeds and we're going to see slightly different behavior uh, when those transactions are going to be matched. So notice that it's not going to be sitting here in uncategorized anymore is going to be now under recognized and under is it's under the auto matched uh, category. So auto match means that we went ahead and noticed that there's another transaction in the same account for the same dollar amount within a similar uh, date range. And we're going to go ahead and match these. So when I click on the drop down menu, I can make it not a match. If for whatever reason, QuickBooks made a mistake and uh, and uh, matched it wrong. If I click on view details, I can quickly preview the underlying transaction that is trying to match with. So at that point, I can confirm and say, yeah, that's perfect. That sounds uh, about right. So I can just click on confirm uh, one by one, or you can do the batch uh, add as well. And that will add uh, that transaction uh, for you. So it's actually really neat uh, how that will work. Now to be 100% transparent, none of these things are new features per se. If you have used QuickBooks Desktop in the past, 2020, 2019, 18, 17, whatever year version you were using, all these functions worked, just that this screen looked very, very different. Finally, they made a screen that looks uh, really, really friendly and it just feels easier to operate. All of these co columns uh, can be clicked on to uh, resort by those columns. And that's something that didn't work really well in older versions, so definitely Kudos uh, to QuickBooks for improving that experience. But there is a new feature, especially if you're an old school uh, QuickBooks user that has been using bank feeds in one way, shape, or form that you never saw before, which is the search or the filter uh, box. So for example, let's say I wanted to only have uh, things in here that had uh, .com. Let's just say anything that has .com in the vendor name is the only thing I want to see. So I'm going to go here in the search box and I'm simply just going to type .com, hit tab, and then now notice that it's only showing transactions that have a .com in it. Uh, with the same uh, uh, situation, let's say I only want something that has the word Miami in it, hit tab, and then notice that we have all the transactions that say Miami. This could come really, really handy whenever you have a whole bunch of expenses that in essence are the same thing, but they contain that city name in it. This happens to me all the time with clients that travel. Like I had a client that traveled to Barcelona. So I knew that anything that had the word Barcelona or Spain or España or whatever, uh, you know, derivatives or where he was physically, I could just code all that stuff to travel expense without having to research each of the vendors or the payees uh, one by one. So that becomes just really extremely handy having this little search box, search box there. By the way, as small as that little search box might seem, that's a complete game changer for someone like me that's doing hundreds, if not thousands of transactions at the time. So during this upcoming tax season, when we're, when we're doing millions of lines of data entry, that search box is just going to be 100% uh, value add for us. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on X to uh, sort of remove that search. And I'm going to click on this little uh, filter button. What's really cool about that filter button is I can uh, reduce a particular 
uh, date range. So let's say I only want to look at January of 2020. So I just come here on the from, and then I'll put 01, 01, 2020 through 01, 31, 2020. This becomes particularly useful for people that are doing the bank feeds while they have a particular month of bank statement in front of them. Why? Because I don't want to see any of the other transactions when I sort by vendor or payee, I want it to be within that date range. When I sort by amount, I want it to be uh, within that rate date range. So this is what you find it really uh, useful to have that date, date range uh, search in there. So I'm going to clear that filter and then show you how else this uh, filter will work. You can filter to only see, for example, credit card charges. So you can opt to only do that, or you only want to see credit card credits. In the case of a bank, it would be to only see bank debits uh, or bank credits. So only checks and withdrawals versus only deposits and transfers coming in. So depending on the context, whether you're working with a bank or a credit card, that would work like that. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll confess that this is R1, right? So this just came out. And in the real world, Every time QuickBooks comes out with a new feature, uh, there's always bugs in it. I've already found a couple of bugs. I'm not going to spend too much time on the bugs because I'm hoping that uh, QuickBooks or Intuit is watching this and they and they have taken my feedback on uh, on fixing those bugs. And usually within a month or two, you would see uh, more features added to this and all those bugs resolved. But this is a f an awesome uh, first attempt to getting bank feeds to be much more uh, easier to use, more operational, more efficient for anyone that's downloading transactions into uh, QuickBooks. So anyway, I will be doing an update probably in a couple of months once you know this thing is 100% uh, bug-free and everything works really well. Maybe they'll add some additional features. So stay tuned for a version two of this video that might go a little bit more in depth, especially on the matching, uh, dealing with checks, dealing with deposits matching. There's, there's going to be a lot more moving parts, especially in the rules and the matching portion. And I promise I will deliver a video with that content. Anyway, if you liked the video and you watched it up to this point, please make sure you hit like, hit subscribe. We're just hitting 100,000 subscribers. We're focused on helping small business owners and accounting professionals like you be more efficient at your accounting tools, such as QuickBooks. And if you're going to purchase QuickBooks desktop or even QuickBooks online, check out the links in the description below. Contact us. We are resellers. This is how we can sustain and you can support the channel by purchasing QuickBooks products from us or hiring our team to help you uh, organize your finances, do your accounting work, private training, whatever it happens to be. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.